Welcome everybody back to another Dark Matter Cosplay. This is a special edition. I recently put up a post on my Instagram and I asked people for questions and I said I would answer them and I'm going to answer them right here on video. So no matter what the question is, I'm going to answer it for you. So without further ado, I present to you, Michael Mosley answers the questions. The best way to start off is with the very first question. Our first question comes from Green with Evil, and he asks, Why are you such a badass? Well, let me tell you why. Because when my mama and daddy were getting together, he was drinking lightning, and she was drinking thunder. I don't think that's a real thing. There's no real lightning or thunder. I don't know. Now, in all seriousness, I just try to be humble. Um, I don't think I'm that BA, but I do pride myself on being who I am and being honest. Um, and I'm a nerd and being a nerd before being a nerd was cool. Uh, some of you guys out there know what I'm talking about, you know, from being beat up and put in the lockers and stuff like that. That's where I started. Um, so I don't think it's more so BA as much as it is being myself. And hopefully you guys are all yourselves as well. And if you aren't, it's okay. You should be because that's what will make you BA. Our next question comes from Jambata. She asks, how long does it usually take for us to complete a project? And what's my favorite or least favorite project I've ever worked on? Now I've gotten that question a couple times, so I'm gonna answer it in different ways with different uh, answers that will hopefully give you guys a little bit more insight on who I am and a little bit more about our projects. So first one, first part. It usually takes me, I'd say anywhere between a week to two weeks, depending on the uh, project that I'm working on. Um, and really the time, you know, it changes. So sometimes if it's just, you know, one armor piece, it may take me a day. But for the most part, overall, as an average, I would say between a week or two. And the reason why is this. I could sit down in one day and knock out almost every project that I have, but it begins to lose its fun. So as soon as I start to get frustrated or annoyed, I take myself out of the project and I go and do something different. Whether it's play video games or something like that, that gets my mind off of the project. And then once I've calmed down a little bit, I jump back in and keep going. I find that this helps me because it helps me actually focus on the problem. And so instead of being angry and frustrated and making careless mistakes, if I step away from it and come back, it's like almost kind of like fresh eyes. Um, so that's how long it usually takes me and that's why it takes me so long. Uh, my favorite and least favorite projects that I've worked on. Uh, first, I'm gonna do this one for favorite and least favorite in the aspect of just the materials. And some of the other ones that we work on, I may be talking about clients or things like that. But this one, just talking about materials. Uh, my favorite project to ever work on was the New Days project for WrestleMania. The uh, reason why is for many of you guys out there, you guys already know this, uh, Xavier Woods or Austin Creed or whatever you want to call him, is in real life my best friend. I love the guy. We came up together in the wrestling business and ever since he's always been looking out for me and same vice versa. So being able to be somewhere and work hands-on with my best friend was super cool. And on top of that, I got to bring my other friends with me and I got to meet some of his friends. So it was like all of our friends working together in this super collaborative effort and it was absolutely amazing. My least favorite time ever working on a cosplay was the first time I worked with Warbler. Oh my goodness, I wanted to pull my hair out. I could not figure this stuff out. And it, it just wasn't a good time. Um, I kept messing up and I didn't know at the time, this is back when Warbler first came out, right? Uh, I didn't know at the time that you could just heat it and reuse it. So I thought I kept messing up and I kept throwing it away. So I kept reordering Warbler over and over and over again for this project. Spent hundreds of dollars on Warbler just because I wanted to perfect it and get it right. Not realizing I could have done the same thing and just reused the Warbler I already had. So that is why that is my least favorite and that one kind of stunk. Ooh. Our next question comes from D. Snowy. What was the most difficult cosplay I've ever worked on and why was it so difficult? Okay, this is one that a lot of people never got a chance to see. It was making the wings for Becky Lynch. Um, two WrestleManias ago, we made these really awesome wings and she was going to uh, wear them for WrestleMania. And then they held the project that she was going to wear a little later on. They held that again. I don't think we're ever going to see these wings. That really stinks, but ugh. Uh, it was difficult because of, of two reasons. One, uh, someone who's become one of my good friends now, his name is Steven. Uh, he works with Wayland Forge. If you guys have not checked out their site, go check them out. Wayland Forge, super awesome, great people. They do props and stuff like that. We work hand-in-hand -hand with each other. But either way, it was our first time working together, so we had to figure out how we mesh. 
Uh, so that made it a little difficult just because you know it's two different companies coming together and really trying to to build something together. But more than that, it was building something that was going to be seen on TV in front of millions of people, trying to figure out how to build this. Now we had to make it so the wings open, but we need to make sure they could close easily for they're easy to take off. Easy to take off. They had um, lights and smoke and all sorts of fun things, and we had to give it this uh, futuristic, steampunky, you know, kind of feel. I don't want to say steampunk's really futuristic. It's like futuristic in a way that Star Wars is a long time ago. Anyways, um, either way, we had to build this look. Uh, so it was so much pressure, and it was our first real crack at doing something big and mainstream of this size. Uh, we built costumes for the New Day and people like that before, but never something this big for WrestleMania. Uh, and honestly, that piece is was a defining piece or the turning point from where we went from you know just people who worked our normal day jobs and then built cosplays and stuff like that on the sides to this is my job, this is what I do now. Because once we've done that, people took notice of it and they said, wow, this is cool, can you do this? Or I would like to see that. Next thing you know, we're building for NFL and ESPN, WWE, New Japan, Ring of Honor, TNA, and, and it's just snowballing. Now people from TV and movie are calling us to build certain set pieces and costumes and yada, 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 building, building, and it all came from these wings. So it was difficult because it was our first time, it was the biggest project, but in the end, it was also the most rewarding and the one that actually put us on the map. Mr. Matthew Mayo writes, have I ever been surprised by any costume requests? And if so, what was it and by who? That's me paraphrasing, but essentially that's what he asked. Um, yes, and it actually came from my best friend. So uh, Woods and I were doing Momocon, and I'm at this point where I'm like, we gotta do something big. Let's do War Machine, and let's do Iron Man, and Iron Patriot, let's go big and go hard with it. And he's like, man, you know what? I really wanna do Quail Man. And I laughed at him. I was like, oh, that's, that's funny, okay. But what about the war machine, the Iron Man? He was like, no, I, I really want to do Quail Man. So I was like, okay, well, let's make you Quail Man. And at first I was like, this is, this is a joke. Why would we do this? Well, he wanted it. So we went hard. We made it. Uh, and I made myself a Chucky Finster. And to be honest with you, that was the most fun cosplay I have ever done. It was so cool. Everyone popped hard and got really, you know, awesome reactions. But it was cool because I felt like my, I felt like myself. It was so freeing and awesome. And uh, making him Quail Man and watching him light up, experience like no other. So that's the craziest request I've had uh, that I could think of. Yeah, I think, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. This next question comes from Matthew Fabiano. He asks, "Do you make costumes for other people other than wrestlers? And if so, how much do they cost?" Uh, we absolutely do. We make costumes for everybody. Uh, we don't limit our costumes to people um, of any profession. It's, we just like to make costumes. That's what we do. We do it for fun because we're nerds and we just like building. And honestly, most of the times when we're building the costumes for people, it's more for us because we get more excited and pop big off of making it for everybody. More than that though, we get more excited when we hand the costume to a customer and they smile. And it's exactly what they wanted or exactly how they envisioned it or whatever the, the scenario is. And you can just see that it's like a nerd exchange, like your nerd power to my nerd power. Like, oh, there's that moment. Like we almost want to give each other a high five, but then it's awkward. So you're like, yeah, right. Um, and the cool thing is, is that when we build costumes, we give everyone the one on one attention uh, to as if they're our only client. So if we're building a costume, we let you decide everything from the colors to the materials um, to the sizes and stuff of that nature. Because some people like their costumes a little bigger, a little smaller. We really let you guys be hand on hand with us. So while we're building it for you, it's almost more like a collaborative effort. We work as a team. Like you were really brought into our team to build your uh, costume. Because of all that though, and the time we take and the material, we don't use cheap materials and things of that nature. Uh, we want our costumes to last so that you can wear them for several conventions and you don't have to fix them with duct tape and things of that nature. We are a little bit on the higher end, uh, but you know it's, it's hard to say how much a single costume costs. It really depends on the costume and how much time and how much you know how many materials we have to put into it. Um, you could find that a you know single armed uh, garment may cost more than an entire outfit because there's more layers and colors and fabrics and things like that into the single arm piece. So it really depends. But 
Thank you, that's an awesome question. So if anybody's interested in booking something or having something commissioned for them, just drop me a line in the Instagram. Uh, I do have periods throughout the course of the year where we slow down. Um, definitely not you know, around mania and stuff like that, but we do have periods where we slow down and when we do, that's when we do all our commissions. Our next question comes from Tommy Owens. Tommy wants to know, how would I go about building a storm stormtrooper costume? Would I build it myself or buy one online? All right, so that's a really, really good question. Let me also get into this, because this is a, a, a bigger uh, explanation for this. Uh, but I'm gonna try to condense it down for you, Tommy. Uh, there's a simple principle that I have whenever I'm building any costumes or cosplays for any conventions or things of that nature. Do I have time and do I have money? And let me explain what that means. If you want something built for you, it's going to cost more money. Uh, if you want something you build yourself, it's going to cost less money, but you're going to need more time. Um, so that's what the first thing you have to do when you break it down. When I do anything as far as Stormtroopers or Power Rangers or VR Troopers or Beetleborgs or anything like that, that's a cool armory feel. Very first thing I do is I start with making a template of my body. Um, there's a lot of cool templates out there, especially for um, duct tape uh, body forms and things of that nature. You're definitely going to want one of those for yourself if you're looking at building any of this stuff for yourself. From there, you make your patterns. Um, you take your patterns and you trace them onto, um, uh, oh, just slipped my mind, craft foam. You take your craft foam, you sandwich it between two pieces of warbla, or you can use that for an EVA foam, and you just go, the process goes from there. So uh, there's a lot of different methods of doing it. Moral of the story is, you can either make it yourself or you can buy it, but you have to decide which one do you want to use. Do you want to use more time or do you want to use more money? Once you make that decision, you're able to then go from there. Um, for me to give you a little bit more in depth on this because it is a huge explanation, shoot me a message in my Instagram inbox and what I'll do is I'll sit down and I'll work with you and give you some ideas and some hints, shoot you some videos and stuff like that. And as you're building the process, let me know. And if you get stuck on a certain part, I have no problem helping you out. Um, and then we can also talk about what kind of materials you want to use. Do you want to use EVA foam? Do you want to use uh, Warbla? Do you want to use something else, a different thermal plastic? Do you want, I mean, there's a, a thousand one different things. Do you want papakurit or what do you want to do? So we can really sit down and figure out what it might be easiest for you based off of your skill level and how long you've been doing it. Um, which it doesn't matter, if you, even if you're brand new, we can work on that and I'll show you how to you know, do things and things of that nature. Because hey, there's no better time to start than the present. Next question is from my buddy, The Bearded Variant. What all conventions will I be attending this year? Well, as you know, I travel a lot to these conventions. Anyone that wants us to come out, we go and check out. Um, it is fairly early in the year, so we don't know what all conventions we're going to yet. I do know that there are uh, the Florence Comic Cons in South Carolina, uh, Blurred Con in Washington, Dragon Con, Momo Con, San Diego Comic Con, Cape Fear, Comic Con, Captain's Hero Expo, and uh, lots of other ones. There's, there's a lot, there's a good bit. I would say we were planning on traveling at least two or three a month is our goal. Uh, whether we hit that goal, eh, we'll see, but that's our goal. Our next question comes from Melissa Ray. She asks, what's my favorite wrestler's gear that I've ever made? Well, taking the new day out of it, I have to say Cody Rhodes. He's super cool, super awesome to work with. He's down to earth. He's a nerd like the rest of us, so that's super cool. Uh, we made a Fallout costume for him for, I want to say it's either Final Battle or Death Before Dishonor, one of the two uh, big Ring of Honor shows. Anyway, we made the uh, jacket that he came out with in the arm piece as well. It was just so much fun working on it. Uh, we kept trying to find the time to do a giant Fallout costume, uh, cosplay with the rest of the group, but we just could never really find the time. So when we had the opportunity to work on this one, oh, yes, so much fun. So much fun. So I would say that's probably my favorite gear I've ever made for a wrestler other than my buddies of the new day. All right, our next question comes from where to next April? What is the very first cosplay I've ever made? I'm gonna pause real fast, time out. For you guys who haven't met April, she's super cool, uh, she's been super supportive. We actually had a chance to meet each other during Dragon Con and just from there, she's just been probably one of my favorite people in the entire world. Uh, just real awesome. Like this, there's, there's some people you meet and you just go, you know, you are just a genuinely cool person. So April, keep being cool because you rock the free world, baby. Um, now on to my very first costume I ever made. It's a weird story. Um, 
and it's two costumes, so follow me on this little journey. First year I ever went to a convention, I was still wrestling, and I went with uh, Austin and my sister Ebony. Um, so when we got there, we didn't realize it was going to be like this ginormous, like everyone dresses up the entire time kind of thing. So we just went as wrestlers. After we finished our wrestling show, we threw our wrestling gear and we just walked around as wrestlers. Um, so later on that uh, night, we were like, we got to do something different. So we went to Walmart and we're trying to find some sort of costume or something so we can blend in with everyone. And we were walking past these jockey underwear and there were people on the front, like doing the awkward smiling pose, like, like the guys in the room. So we're like, yo, let's be underwear models. So we bought underwear and we walked around the entire convention in underwear. And I was like, oh, okay, ha, this is funny. But then after that convention, uh, myself, Austin, and Ebony sat down, we had a conversation. And we knew that from that point forward, we didn't only want to go to a convention, we wanted to beat that convention in. We wanted to have the coolest costumes and we wanted to be the thing that everyone saw. And they were like, man, we want pictures and we want to do this. And from that point, it just took off from there. So the very next year, the very first costume I actually had a hand in creating uh, was a scorpion. So I built a scorpion costume for myself. Um, and then I also built a frost costume for Ebony. And then uh, for Austin, did he do, what did he do that year? Johnny Cage, maybe? No, Kano. He did Kano that year. Uh, so we built him the prosthetic eye with the red light inside of it, um, which you probably see in the pictures, but if not, we'll link some up for you. Um, that was the very first costume I ever made, and that was really the beginning of it. And from that point, I was hooked. I uh, bought myself a sewing machine, uh, bought myself some tools, and just kept going from there. And it's been 15 years-ish, I think, now, since then, maybe. It's been a long time. Next question comes from the Jerry Chan. How does it feel to see your hard work on TV? Well, Jerry, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, it's bittersweet. Uh, I originally started on this journey to become a professional wrestler. Um, and so I thought that that's what I was going to do. Like from the moment I graduated high school, to the moment I graduated college, to the moment I graduated from wrestling school, I knew in my heart of hearts, I was meant to be on TV, wrestling, doing all sorts of cool things. Um, unfortunately, uh, I did get a chance and was on some really cool shows and was on TV for a little bit, some of you guys know that. Um, but then that dream kind of ended. But it's okay, because every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. So, uh, seeing it on TV now, it's amazing. I love seeing my work. I um, love seeing them on action figures and things like that. Uh, but at the same time, it's still bittersweet because I still wish that it was me sometimes in the ring. But I get to live back here, say to all my friends that are still professional wrestlers, so that's super cool. Um, but to sum it all up, it's it's really cool. It's there's a feeling like like no, they're watching your own stuff come you know on TV, and you know especially like we built this costume for Biggie where it's this exploding cereal everywhere. And uh, watching that on TV was really cool because it took us months to work on. And it was, and it's, it's, it's pretty sweet. I'm not going to lie to you. It's pretty sweet. I still wish it was me out there, but still nonetheless, still pretty sweet. Our next one comes from is41f. Can you follow me, please? Man, I try to, dude, but you drive way too fast. If you want me to follow you, you got to slow down, okay, dude? Also, when you're walking through the mall, stop speeding around corners. If I'm going to stalk you, you got to give me the ability to stalk you. Oh, that's, that's the follow he meant? He meant on Instagram. This is awkward. <laughs> the next question comes from the whole Kate and Caboodle. She wants to know, do I have a team of employees or people who work with me? Or do I do it all myself? And if I do it with a team, how much do I do myself and what parts do I do myself? Well, let me answer that for you. Um, I don't have employees because employees is, you know, me being the boss of someone. Um, and I don't ever like being the boss and no one ever likes being the boss. And the way that our group is, you know, structured, there is no boss. We're just a bunch of cool people that hang out. Uh, but there's a group of us and it's really cool. Uh, we're the Dark Matter cosplay team. Um, and... The cool thing about working with these guys is everyone brings something really cool to the table that's unique and different. Some are better at makeup, some are better at foam, some are better at painting and things of that nature. Um, the way that it all started was I started doing everything by myself. And then from me working by myself, uh, Caitlin came on board. And then once Caitlin came on board, 
Cody came on board, and then uh, Cody's brother Jared came on board, and then Meg came on board, and then from Meg, then Maggie came on board, and from that point, we've just been growing, you know? Um, as far as what parts I do myself uh, versus what parts I do with everyone else, um, it's really weird because I do a little bit of everything while everybody else has their specialty. So uh, I'm almost like the relief hitter in some aspects. Um, so like Meg does a lot of our foam creation, um, but when she needs help with foam or she doesn't know how to do something or she has a question about something or she just needs someone to bounce ideas off of, then I jump in with her and we work hand in hand there. At the same time that this is happening, you have um, Jared who may be working on a sewing project uh, and I'll jump in to help him there. Or you have Caitlin who may be doing something with the art and I'll jump in there with her, you know. And we just kind of, I just kind of float around with everybody. Um, but all together, every piece that we do, it's all of us. Like, so not one person works on one piece. We all bring our ideas to, to the table. And before we even start, we actually dry out everything and figure out how we're going to do it, decide how can this be done, mesh our ideas together. And by doing that, it makes the project number one more fun number two it makes us as a, a team really come together uh, and it helps every project go smooth and it's, we're able to do multiple projects at the same time because of that uh, so it's a team of us um, they're definitely not employees I'm definitely not their boss let me make that very clear we're just a bunch of nerds that just work together hand in hand and we like to try to make a difference so uh, yeah there's that answer real X Kai ask how much would it cost a request for an outfit to be made? Nothing. You can request a costume all you like. <laughs> but now if I make it for you, that's a whole other story. No, but on a serious note, uh, it really depends on the costume, depends on the materials, depends on what you want, uh, and all that fun jazz. So, mm, yeah. Our next uh, question comes from Caitlin Shea. Oh, it's not a question, it's actually a comment. That's so cool, love the hair. Me too. Thank you. Our next question comes from Big Papa Thumb. He wants to know what my favorite con is I've ever been to. I'm gonna start there. And then he also wants to know, um, is there any wrestler, past or present that I wish I would build some costumes for? Is that right? Pretty much the, the basis of it? Okay, sweet. Um, for you guys to know, I can't see the questions, so I'm kind of going off of uh, Meg and Jared in the background who are feeding them to me, so bear with me. <laughs> okay. Uh, my favorite con to go to will always be forever and ever and always Dragon Con because that's our home. That's where we got our start. Uh, we can see all of our friends there. It's the one time that our crew, honestly, everybody, no matter where you're at, no matter where you're from, no matter what you're working or what you're doing, we all get to get together. So Dragon Con will always be that for me. I love it. It's the thing that really boosted my nerdum. If there's one person I could work with, past or present, to build a costume for, uh, yeah, actually, I would absolutely love, love, love to work with Shawn Michaels. Um, Shawn was just so flamboyant and, and amazing, and his gear was just out there. It just, you know, it's just so cool. Really, it's just, it's just so cool. Um, and I know the people who actually worked on some of this stuff, and they're super cool. Um, but if I had an opportunity, just just once, to get in there and work on some of the Heartbreak Kids uh, gear, I, I would have it been a dream come true. Uh, who knows? Maybe he'll go back to wrestling and be like, hey, I heard you're good at this whole cosplay thing. Can you make me? And I'm like, <laughs> you got it, Sean. Anything for you. But first, let me check my schedule and see if I'm free. Just joking. Our next question comes from the almighty Danish. Can we be friends? Bruh, ain't nothing but a word. Except, oh, sorry, let me back up. I have a friends application, and it's three questions. If you answer these three questions right, we're boys. Number one, do you like the Green Bay Packers? Now listen, Mike Daniels, one of my dudes, but I'm a Viking fan through and through. So unless you root for Mike, can't like the Green Bay Packers. That's how it works. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All my Packer fans out there, I get it. I know you're upset right now. You're wanting to hit backspace to lead on me right now. I'm sorry. But I love you. I love you nonetheless. Um, next question is very simple. Heroes or villains? Which side do you prefer? If you like the heroes, yeah, probably won't hang with us. I'm a 
bad guy kind of person. I'm a Slytherin and a, uh, you know, bad guy. Can't think of a bad guy right now. But bad guys. Bad guys for life. Oh, you about those Autobots? You better roll yourself out. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was great. Uh, and the last question is really the, the most important one. The first two are just jokes, but the last one's really important. Can we be friends? Do you treat people like people no matter if you disagree with them? If you answer yes to that, we're already friends. Uh, love, that's what our society's missing today. Um, and I think that even amongst the nerds community, we have forgotten about love. We were the group of outsiders who felt like we weren't accepted anywhere, so we banded together to help build each other up. And now even amongst the nerd community, we're starting to outcast people. So if you're about love and you're about positivity and you're about promoting people and you know, boosting them up and making the world and especially the nerd world, but the world in general a better place, then dude, we can be friends anytime. But if you're not, then I'm probably not the guy you want to be friends with because I, I spout positivity about everything all the time. And you probably don't want to hear all that. I am better than you ask, what costume did I design that made me sit back and say, wow, I'm really good, and can I help you design your football costumes? Well, first, absolutely, I'd love to help you design your football costumes. I love football, so sure, let me know what you need, and we can come up with some really cool things. Our team is all about footballs, actually. So Sunday, uh, during football season, we typically shut down production so we can watch football. So, you know, we'd love to love to help out with that. Um, I haven't had a costume that I've stepped back and said, I'm pretty good at this. I actually, every costume I ever build, I second guess. Uh, I know the rest of my team does as well. Um, when we get to the point when we feel like we are too good, then we need to stop. When you lose the butterflies, you need to stop. Um, so we always love our work, but we always feel like we could do more. Uh, when we see it on TV or we see someone wearing it, we always go, man, I wish I would have. I wish I could do this next time. Um, but that's how you learn. Uh, that's how you grow. So there's not been a single costume that's made me step back and go, oh, this is the one. But um, on the second side of that, there was a costume where I think my parents realized um, that I was starting to become pretty decent at this and it really bridged the gap that we had. Um, my parents wanted me to go off to become a doctor, of course, like most parents. And out of love, they wanted me to make money and be successful. Um, and I was a theater nerd and you know, always into the costuming and the, the nerdy stuff. Um, so it was always like a weird divide. There. And they loved me no matter what, of course, but it was just, it was a weird divide there. Um, but when I made the WrestleMania stuff and I called my dad and I said, hey, this is on TV. And he didn't have the WWE Network. My mom didn't have the WWE Network. No one even knew what it was, but they bought the WWE Network to watch my stuff. And they called me afterwards and they said, did you make that? And I was like, yeah, like myself and my team made it. It was, um, it was awesome because we finally connected on something. And uh, I think because of that, I would say that's probably the, the costume that made me go, yeah, Ooh, we're doing something. We're, we're, we're making things happen. Heatley asked, you've been at a lot of cons, which one's your favorite? So, okay, of course I'm gonna take Dragon Con out of this. Um, I really like going to some of the smaller cons because you can see uh, a lot of people who don't go to the bigger cons and it's more of a intimate feel. But I also like going to a lot of the bigger cons as well. Like, I, I just like conventions in general. It's such a weird feeling. If I walk out uh, and go to Kroger right now or Walmart, wherever you're from, if you don't have a Kroger, and I put on a Superman cape and um, I throw on my hero boots and I have my tights and I walk through the aisle, people stop and they stare at me and they laugh and they take pictures of me because they think it's funny. When I go to a convention, they stop, they take pictures of me because they think it's cool. When I'm at these conventions, I'm around my brethren. I feel at home. I feel at peace. Um, I feel like no matter what I do, I'm accepted. No matter what I like, I'm accepted. Uh, so really, I just like going to conventions in general and that's why really. It's, you know, it's that sense of feeling like I belong. It's almost like Cheers, right? You want to go where everybody knows your name. Next question comes from Wrestling R Us. What's your favorite cartoon? I can't answer that because I skip around so much. Um, there's a lot of cartoons that I like. 
Um, I really love Inuyasha. Um, I am wrapping, you know, animes and cartoons. I'm just going to put them all together, so please bear with me. Uh, I really like Attack on Titan, uh, Elf and Light. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I like that a lot. Uh, Rick and Morty. Um, no, you know what? Actually, I, the, the cartoon that I think that I like the most, uh, and I actually hunted for about four years to find these on DVD, was Centurions. Uh, a lot of people don't know about Centurions, but in my opinion, it's like the predecessor to Power Rangers and all these other cool things, and it was just these three guys who had these super cool armor tech suits on that had like these really weird pods on them, and uh, they would hold their arms out and they would beam down pieces on them, so like one would turn into an airplane, and one would turn into a boat, and one would turn into a tank, and it was cool. It was probably one of my favorite ones. Uh, that, and oh, you know what? Oh, man. A lot of people don't know about this either. James Bond Jr., that show was so awesome. I used to wake up on uh, Saturday mornings and I would watch James Bond Jr. I remember the theme song was like, James Bond Jr. chases James Bond Jr. chases James Bond Jr. chases scum around the world. Um, so I like James Bond Jr. Uh, of course Sailor Moon. You gotta like Sailor Moon. There's so many. I, I, like, I just like cartoons. I like them all. Um, I don't think I have a, one favorite, but I have a lot that I really like. I can tell you one that um, I would say I didn't think that I would like. And I actually have grown to love it. My Little Pony. That show is so awesome. I'm a brony. Yeah, big deal. Christine Young asks, Whose ring gear was my favorite to design and make? Um, I really like making uh, the New Day stuff. I like making Cody Rhodes stuff. Um, you know, you know, here's one I have on talk about a lot. I really enjoyed making Ember Moon stuff. Uh, we made her stuff for uh, uh, NXT TakeOver Houston, I think it was. The Houston gear we made. Uh, NXT TakeOver Houston, where she came out with the Raven stuff on. Uh, that was just, it was a lot of fun. Um, because we're big Teen Titan fans. Um, and talking with her, she's as big of a nerd as anybody. Which is the one thing I really think is the most fascinating amongst, you know, building costumes for some of your celebrities and stuff. They're as big of nerds as the rest of us. And I think oftentimes we forget, because they are celebrities, that they are people as well. Um, but yeah, it, that was that was actually a lot of fun to work with. And she's really easy to work with, too. She's super awesome, um, real down-to-earth, and you can just talk to her. So it's, she's she's cool. Arkansas Vinyl asks, If I could dress any wrestler from any time period, who would it be and what would I put them in? Okay, this is going to be a weird question, uh, answer, that I'm going to try to keep myself composed uh, for. Um, my grandfather. Uh, a lot of people don't know that, so let me explain why. Um, when I decided I wanted to be a professional wrestler, the first person I called uh, after my parents was my grandfather. Um, my grandfather used to tell me stories about how he, you know, what, did the professional wrestling and how he wanted to be a professional wrestler and his dreams and, you know, taking my mom to see Chief Wahoo McDaniel and all this other cool stuff. Um, and so, my mom's side family, they're all Mosleys. Um, my grandfather was a hunter. Um, this is his last name, so just to give you, it'll make sense in a second. Uh, so when I decided to create a character, uh, when I decided to become that wrestler, I had to make my persona. So I became Michael Mosley, and my finisher was the Hunter's Mark. Um, because of my grandfather. Uh, so fast forward years later I'm wrestling and I'm carrying on this name and it's so much pride and I have a chance my very first time to be on TNA um, so I was going to do the thing with TNA and I was part of this group called the congregation uh, with the Pope D'Angelo De Niro um, and right before I made it to TV my grandfather passed away and it sucked because the only thing I wanted to do was to fulfill his dream while fulfilling my dream as well. We all have those stories of the very first time where we knew we wanted to become a wrestler. The very first time I knew I wanted to become a wrestler was while I was sitting on his lap and I watched King Mabel become the king of the ring. And I looked back at him and the look on his face of joy and pride, um, it, just, it was just amazing and I wanted to make people feel like that. Um, so if I could go and dress any wrestler ever, I would dress my grandfather, and I would make us matching wrestling gear, and we'd go out there and we'd destroy the world. We would tear it up. We would tear it up. Um, yeah, that's. I, I think that would be who it is. 
Um, but for the sakes of making this a little more fun, I'll also tell you who we would wrestle and uh, what I would make them and what I would put them in. Um, we would wrestle probably uh, Undertaker and Kane. And I would make Kane the most demonic looking mass I possibly could. I'd make it just hideous and give it that melted wax look as he's coming out. Um, and I would make uh, Undertaker, I'd make him something just dingy and dark, a little more browns and purples to give him that real nasty, dusty feel uh, as he came out. Um, and then of course I'd put us in something fun like light blue, whites or silvers. Um, but who knows? Pops, maybe we'll wrestle together someday. Maybe just in a different place. Uh, that'd be cool. That's, that's probably what I do. All right, you guys, thank you guys for asking questions. Hope you guys all enjoyed. I think maybe in like a couple of months we'll do the same thing. I'll post up another chance to answer some questions uh, and give you guys a chance to really get to know myself and you know, vice versa, so I get to know you guys a little better as well. Um, I want to thank you guys really for all the support. You know, we decided to go live with doing the YouTube and the Instagram uh, really this past year. Um, and you guys have just supported all five of us, the entire Dark Matter cosplay team. Um, and we, we love you guys for that. It's so cool. And you guys are helping us, you know, live our dreams. And it's amazing, you know. Um, I really can't say how thankful we are for you guys. I really can't say I begin to show my appreciation. Um, but thank you guys. You, you really are amazing. Super awesome. Um, and I know that because of you guys, 2018 is going to be even better. And then 2019 is going to be even better. 2020 is going to be even better and we're all going to look back as we take this journey you guys and ourselves and we're going to remember year one and we're going to look back and smile because it's because of you guys that we group of five nerds were able to go out there and hopefully change the world as always thank you guys for watching i'm the one and only be real michael mosley also known as matt and i hope you guys as always cosplay on